The governorship election in Kogi, Imo and Bayasa state is not only a search for who will govern these states for the next four years, it is another test of the progress the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has made since the elections that held earlier this year. Tonight, our focus is on the factors that are likely to influence the events of the next five days. Baba Jidil Gunso, founder of Leadership by Data and Channels Television's data consultant, is right here to share insights on this. Rajde, it's great to have you again on the News at 10. Good evening, hi, it's Sunday. All right, so we're looking at the elections, uh, the off-cycle elections built for this Saturday. Kogi, Bayasa, and of course, uh, Imo State. Uh, of course, they won't be just at the polls to elect their leaders, but uh, for another four years. But, you know, like we already know, it's something that uh, the people are now looking forward to, a whole lot of expectations and, and all whatnot. But mm -hmm. tell us about the profile of these voters who will be going out to the polls. Are they different from the ones that we saw earlier you know, in the general elections, you know, earlier in the year? There are several ways we could look at the, the profile of these voters. Um, perhaps there are three key ways I'd like us to focus on. Um, the first is to take a look at what you've asked about. Um, are these voters significantly different from those that voted earlier in the year? And if we take a look at the difference um, based on what happened in terms of those that had collected their permanent voter cards during the elections earlier in the year and the results of those that have collected their permanent voter cards for this election, what we see is that there's no significant difference. In summary, let's look at Kogi State. 1.81 million persons had collected, voters had collected their PVCs when the presidential and national assembly elections held. That has changed by only 1%. Same thing by Elsa. Earlier in the year, 1 million, just an additional, less than 8,000 additional people, persons have collected their PVCs, just a growth of 1% compared to earlier in the year. And in Imo State, 2.2 million persons had collected their PVCs when the elections were held earlier in the year. We've seen that grown by about 2%. The summary is approximately the same profile of persons that voted when the presidential and national assembly elections were held will be the same persons that will um, make their choice about who will govern them for the next four years. Which is quite remarkable. Yes, it is. But the question is, you will probably be wondering, why are the, no why are the numbers significantly changing? And the report from INEC shows that for every 10 persons that have registered in each of these states, nine have already picked up their PVCs. So what INEC is saying is the reason why the numbers are not significantly growing is because majority have picked up their PVCs. Now, it's a different question if people will use their PVCs, and I'm sure we'll get, at, get into that later. So that's the first set of numbers that are interesting. The second out of three key numbers, I attend, is that, yes, it's governorship elections, but these elections are like student union elections because based on the profile of persons that have collected their permanent voter cards in each of these states, INEC says majority of them are students. So this election will largely be influenced by how students are thinking. Predominantly the youth. Predominantly the youth between the age of 18 to 34. Now another interesting fact is, we remember when the presidential, the governorship elections were held earlier in this year. There were 11 states that their governors were up for re-election. In the south, we remember Lagos, Ogun, Oyo. In the northeast, we remember it was Bono, Adama, Oyobe, Bauchi, Gombe. In the north central, Kwara, Nasarawa. And the northeast, it was Zamfara. Out of these 11 states, only one returning governor lost re-election. Now we have two out of these three states where the governors are up for re-election, Imo and Bayelsa. If we go by what happened earlier in the year, then these governors have a, about a 90% chance of coming back. If we just look at do that, that's a key, key indicator. All right, so I really have to uh, speed up on this because I want to talk about the issue of security now, of course, um, which is going to be play, play a huge role uh, in, the, in the elections. Now, for the look of the, uh, the, 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 the police, I mean, for what we're going to be expecting from them, what other facts has security really improved going into this election? Now, going into this, ele this election, if we look at the surveys, yes, the survey shows that security and the perception of security has improved compared to where it was four years ago. Let's take a look at the 
the surveys and what citizens, how citizens were feeling about election security in the last four years. 2019, when persons were asked, do they feel safe to vote? By Elsa, 34%. Now we've seen the military improve those numbers, especially within the last four months when these polls were done um, within the last two weeks. 41% say they feel safe. In Kogi, four years ago, 35% of those that were polled said they feel safe. We see again a bit of um, perception, security perception improvement, 38%, and in Imo, that has also improved from 28% to 33%. So the numbers look good for security. And of course, if we look at um, the fears of what persons have on, will this election be over militarized? And the answer to that is, I you, there's no such thing as an over-secured election. Um, remember what, for those that um, read the Bible, uh, if I'm right, Luke chapter 15, verse 7, it says, for there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents, that repents yeah. <clears throat> over 99 that need no repentance. So there's more, there will be more joy in Nigeria over one life that is protected than over 99 lives that perhaps will need no protection. So there's no price too, too much to be paid for securing an election. And yes, the, let's take a look at what even the military leaders have said um, regarding what you should expect on this election. And that is for those that want peaceful elections, they will get peaceful elections. But for those who intend to run away with the ballot box, they will be running towards the symmetry. All right, we'll definitely leave it at that. Baba Jilu Gusawa, thank you for your thoughts again on the News at 10. During the week, there's lots of analysis to come on this. It will definitely be here to take a look at each and every one as it unfolds. And definitely thank you once again. The pleasure is all mine.